Welcome back to WebAPA Tutorials. I'm Venkat. In the previous video, we have configured our WebAPA application to use JWT authentication. In this video, let us generate the JWT token after validating the username and password. So this is the configuration we did in the previous video for JWT authentication in our WebAPA. Let's get the username and password from the end user and let's try to validate that. For that, let us try to add new controller. API controller. And this controller is a login controller. I have named it as a login controller. And let me copy the things from our student controller to login controller. So now this login controller needs to be authorized or not? No. Anybody can use it to get the token, right? So adding authorize is not valid. So instead of authorize attribute, we need to put Hello anonymous. So that's the attribute we need to put for login. And now let us add endpoint. So it is a HTTP get or post. It's a post. It's a post endpoint. Public string login. That's the method. And to this method, we need to get the model. In that model, we will get the username and password like public class login model. So, in this login model, it is a string username, we will get the username and password. So this is the login model and once the login is succeeded, we will return the token. So login response. In our web API, we are following DTO convention, right? Here also, let us make it DTO. Okay. So these are the two DTOs we need to create. So login DTO is to get username and password from the end user. So after validating these two, if you want to return the username and token, so you need to create a response DTO. Okay. So let us create login DTO. In the models class, and that's a login DTO, add it. And inside this, this is the login DTO. I am removing here and adding it here. Okay, that's the login DTO in separate file. And let us create login response DTO. Models add class. So that's the login response DTO. And let's put this there. And that's the login response DTO. Okay. So now instead of string, it is a login response DTO. And what is input? Login DTO. That's the input. And inside this username and password both are required. Okay. Here we can put the required attribute. So we have discussed this earlier. So these two are required now. Here we can validate the model. If model dot is valid. If the model validation is failed, if the model validation is failed, 
return bad request instead of that let us make it action result so that it will accept anything please provide the username and password so here we made it clear to the user so if the model is invalid then we are saying please provide username and password so after that once the validation is completed here we need to validate the username and password model dot username so here i'm hard coding the values but in the upcoming videos we are going to replace this hard coded values with database tables and getting the data from database and we are going to validate that data with databases so we are going to do the real time samples okay for this video only i am hard coding it if the username equal to venkat and model dot password equal to venkat 123 so if the username and password is equal to these two then only we consider it is a valid okay otherwise it is a bad let's add the else case so if this comes into the else block we need to return bad request invalid username and password it's not a bad request they send the username and password right let's make it okay let us send the success but we are saying invalid username and password and here in password section so in this if block we need to generate the jwt token okay so here we need to get the key first so where key equal to encoding dot ascii dot get bytes get bytes of we need to inject the configuration here let's put the constructor into this constructor private read only i configuration configuration and here i configuration configuration and here underscore configuration configuration so we have injected the configuration into our login controller okay here we need to get the here we need to get the key from configuration configuration dot get value of what is the value so our value is of type string right string and what is the our secret name this is the secret name you can see here so that's the secret name we have put in the app settings.json and we are reading that okay that's the key and we need to create the token handler token handler equal to new jwt security token handler and in this token handler we need to put the data okay to generate the token so where token descriptor token descriptor equal to new security token descriptor inside this token descriptor we need to provide the claims 
subject equal to new claims identity inside this claims identity we need to put new claim these are the claims we are going to put inside the jwt token first one is a user id is there user id no we have a username only for now so we are going to add a username first new claim claim types dot windows subject authority let's make it a name yeah so that's a name claims dot name so for this name we need to put a username model dot username okay we are putting this username inside the payload next one is if there is any role we need to put the role okay in upcoming videos we are going to do the role based authentication but in this video there is no role okay only username and password if you want to put a sample thing that we can put one more thing like new claim of claim types dot role like this we can put i'm just putting the hard coded value so in the upcoming videos we will get this from database okay so this is for sample like this you can put anything so those are the claims this is how we can add the claims okay once done adding the claims we need to add the expiration to the token okay expires equal to date time dot now dot add hours i want this token to be expired after four hours okay so that's the expiry i wanted to put to this token so expiry is done and now we need to provide the signing credentials signing credentials equal to new new symmetric key symmetric security key of so we have read the key here right we need to pass that key here comma security algorithms dot so we have discussed about the security algorithms in the previous video okay so which one we are going to use in this hmac sha 256 okay we can also use 512 signature so 256 384 and 512 three signatures are available okay so which one let us use 512 okay i am using the hmac sha 512 algorithm okay so that's the algorithm i want to use so once done preparing this token descriptor so we need to generate the token where token equal to token handler dot create not this token handler this one token handler dot create token for this we need to give what token descriptor we have prepared so that's the token generation and once the token is generated we need to equal to token dot write sorry token handler token handler dot write token of token so in this we have token okay we can put this inside the login response login response dto equal to response equal to new login response dto okay we can also put like this 
response. So this is a new syntax. We have followed the same thing here. And instead of this one, we can put it inside the response directly. Response.token. We are assigning it to response.token. Okay. So we have created the response object here. And we are assigning that generated token into response.token. So we need to assign the username equal to model.username. We have assigned the username here and we have assigned the token here. So user credentials are valid. Okay, user credentials are valid. And we have generated the token, assigned it to the response. Now what? Need to return the response. Return OK of response. That's it. So with this, we are done generating the token. Okay. In the next video, let us test this one. For more videos like this, please like, share, and subscribe.